We need to talk about the Miami Hurricanes' most explosive players, the ones that can change the complexion of a game with a single play. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. I would like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. We talk a lot of recruiting, of course. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. Great teams always need to have X players. And I want to talk about the top candidates for Miami. And a lot of the names we mentioned are going to be offensive players because we think about guys who can take it to the house, score big touchdowns. But it's worth having the conversation as well about some defensive players who can force turnovers, grab uh, fumbles, interceptions, make big hits and big plays. And let's not forget special teams, right? Because you think about Miami in years past, right? Great return men that the Canes had in the recent glory days. Well, recent for me, the, those of you who are like 18 years old are like, what, do you, what does he mean recent? But, you know, from Santana Moss, Roscoe Parrish, Devin Hester, those were game-changing players. And I think this is an important thing to talk about. Heading into year one of Josh Gaddis's Miami offense, year one of Mario Cristobal, you can look at some things that the Michigan Wolverines were doing and, Oregon Ducks as well, and say, let's see how that translates to Miami, all right? So with Josh Gaddis, offensive coordinator of Michigan last year, Michigan was one of the top teams in the country when it came to explosive plays. They were tied for first nationally last year with 10 plays, offensive plays, of 60 or more yards. Tied for first, okay? Uh, There were a lot of ties throughout those you know those playmakers uh Miami last year they had some x plays we had some explosive players but Miami was tied for 21st nationally with six plays of 60 more yards last year so you hope to kind of bring things up a little bit closer to where Michigan was last year and I think something that helped the explosive plays not only creating these on the ground but setting them up on the ground you know Michigan was one of the top running teams in the country last year so was Oregon So we'll see if, you know, some improved attitude and physicality on Miami's offensive line. And hopefully the running back group that's still healthy will stay healthy and that we can get Don Chaney back from injury sooner rather than later. Because, you know, the more Miami can run the football, Miami's got running backs who can pop big plays. But that's also going to open things up for the passing game and for play action. So Miami can create some of these 60, 70, 80 yard plays, passing plays down the field. Right. And, you know, you think about, you know, whether it be tough games you play on the road at Texas A&M, on the road at Clemson, some of these coastal and ACC games you're going to have to play. Right. I know Miami's a big favorite against Florida State and hopefully Miami blows Florida State out at home. But sometimes you throw out the records when you talk about that rivalry. So that may come down to making a couple explosive plays. Could be the difference in that game, could be the difference in the pit game, in the Virginia, Virginia Tech games. So who are the candidates to be the top explosive playmakers on your Miami Hurricanes this season? A lot of this is based on last year, and a lot of this is based on who's been popping in fall practices and going back to spring practices so far this year. So I believe the top candidate for most explosive player on the Canes this year is Jalen Knighton, the rooster. He's the obvious choice here because he was that for Miami last year. Scored 11 touchdowns a season ago, led Miami in that category, eight touchdowns on the ground, three touchdowns through the air. He's got the sort of game-changing speed and explosiveness where if you get Jalen Knighton in space, good luck catching him from behind. He averaged 14 yards per reception last year out of the backfield, did Rooster. So, 
Uh, I think Jalen Knighton, and I also think that Miami's offensive coaches are going to be smart enough, uh, and and you can say that for a couple more of these players who we're going to mention, going to be smart enough to utilize someone like Jalen Knighton to create mismatches all over the field and use that explosiveness to Miami's advantage. Another one I think is going to make a lot of explosive plays this year. I could see Brashard Smith as a big-time candidate as an X player This is another one with an extra gear and a lot of speed, and he has been making big plays in practices and reportedly in the scrimmages uh, in the fall. Rashard Smith had one of Miami's uh, longest plays from scrimmage last year. He caught a 75-yard touchdown from Tyler Van Dyke last year against Virginia Tech. And Mario Cristobal specifically, after uh, the first or the second scrimmage, after the second scrimmage this past Saturday, Mario Cristobal did an interview on Monday, and he specifically brought up Rashard Smith as one of Miami's two like best wide receivers in practice in the fall, along with Xavier Restrepo. I Xavier, I think, is going to be more of a volume guy. I think Rashard Smith is going to be more explosive, and so you know. The challenge for Mario and Gaddis is going to be getting, I think, Brashard and Restrepo on the field at the same time a lot. And I think they can do it, even though technically they both play the exact same position. I think we're going to see enough creativity on that offense because Brashard Smith needs to be on the field this year a lot. And he's going to be a factor in the return game as well. We'll talk about that. Another candidate for explosive plays, Keyshawn Smith. Another wide receiver. And, okay, let me get this out of the way because every time I bring up wide receivers as explosive play candidates yes the caveat always is they've all got to catch the football they've all got to hold on to footballs no more drops drops the dreaded d word has been a big storyline from the spring game into fall camp too many drops from the wide receivers so yes obviously uh but Keyshawn Smith he had some explosive plays Last season had a 57-yard touchdown grab. Uh, or I, I think that one wasn't a touch, actually, but he had a 57-yard grab against Pittsburgh, scored another touchdown in that game, or scored a touchdown in that game of 13 yards. But 57-yard grab was one of Miami's longer plays last year. Uh, Jacoby George, I think, is a candidate for explosive playmaker this year. Now, he had a limited sample of catches last year as a freshman, had seven catches last year, but... Jacoby George, exciting possibilities with this guy because he's getting better, averaged over 26 yards per catch last year, 26.2 yards per reception last year. So he was a deep target last year. And I think Jacoby George is going to be a more prolific target as a true sophomore this year than he was as a true freshman last year. He's had a pretty good fall camp. I mean, you always have to say pretty good because all these wide receivers have been pretty inconsistent. But he, he's had a pretty good fall camp, and he looks to be, George, like the most fluid route runner that Miami has on the boundary. So I, I think he's going to be able to get open a lot and hopefully create separation because Miami's receivers, um, they caught a lot of deep passes. I still don't think they created enough separation last year outside of really Charleston Rambo, so we hope to see more of that. So Jacoby George, definitely a candidate to be an X play maker this year. I'll give you one a little bit more under the radar. Uh, and I say that because he's a true freshman. So, and, and also he's in a really deep position group. So we'll see how much he actually gets on the field, but I think he's going to be good enough. He's going to get playing time talking about a tight end. And also Josh Gaddis is going to have a lot of tight ends on the field at once. Jaleel Skinner, I think could be a real candidate for X plays. He's got a track background and he lined up a lot in high school as a jumbo wide receiver so I think with his speed and you know his his frame he's long but he's still a little bit skinny as a tight end he looks like a receiver tight end hybrid right now I think Jaleel Skinner is definitely a candidate for explosive plays and listen I think all three of Miami's top tight ends and maybe a fourth with Brantley I think you could see some some long receptions and yak from all of Miami's tight ends this coming year because uh, Will Mallory has done it. And you guys know Elijah Arroyo is a show favorite. He's first team all Dono tight end. We're going to reveal more of those later in the show, by the way. But Jaleel Skinner, I think, is definitely one to keep your eyes out for because he's really, really fast. OK, so those are offensive X players. And, you know. Again, it's going to be so, so important, right? Especially when you're going to have, hopefully if Miami runs the ball the way that they want to run the ball, you're going to have opportunities at play action, trying to hit big plays downfield. You've got a quarterback in Tyler Van Dyke who has a cannon 
for an arm and a lot of accuracy deep down the field. Let's get these X plays going. But I haven't forgotten about punt returns and kick returns. And we've been asked a lot by our listeners and our viewers, who are the kick returners and the punt returners going to be this year? Um, and by the way, we wrote a piece on this at allhurricanes.com. Uh, I, I work with that website, which is the Sports Illustrated Hurricanes page. And I, I think it was my colleague, Luke, who joins the show sometimes, who wrote this one, kind of a special teams preview. And our projection at this point will likely have Rashard Smith and Xavier Restrepo sharing the kick return duties. And then on punt returns, you'll probably see a mix of Rashard who's I think going to be very busy returning kicks and punts this year, Jacoby George and possibly Keyshawn Smith. I don't think Keyshawn returned any kicks last year, but he could be in the rotation for that this year. Uh, so maybe Brashard, Jacoby George, possibly Keyshawn Smith sharing the punt return duties this season. So we would love to see some explosive returns there as well. And yeah, when you're talking explosive players, you know, we're thinking about guys who are going to get it in space and score touchdowns on offense. But I mean, you would consider a takeaway, a turnover to be an explosive play, game changing play, turn the game on its head. Uh, I look to a couple of Miami safeties as guys who are going to generate big hits, potentially force fumbles, grab some interceptions. James Williams, probably at the top of my list there. So ball hawk, he had two interceptions last year as a true freshman. I think now as a as a sophomore, you can probably imagine he's going to at least double that total of INTs this year. And Avante Williams, big hitter. I think he's going to be jarring some balls loose, grabbing some interceptions of his own, forcing some fumbles, right? Guys who can change the game. And hopefully Miami's pass rush does that as well because they've got talent in the pass rush. And Miami has enough quality bodies on the defensive line that they're going to be rotating a lot. So let me know if you guys agree. Do you agree with my candidates for explosive, game-changing players on the Hurricanes this year? And did I leave anybody out? You can tweet us at Locked on Canes. Follow us on Twitter at Locked on Canes. We will follow you back. Tweet us your comments and questions about Canes football day and night. Did I leave anybody out? Because when I look at players, especially like Rooster, Rashard Smith, Keyshawn Smith, Jacoby George. I think these are players on the offense that can make X plays on a semi-regular basis and turn some of these games on their heads, my friends. We got a lot more on this episode of Locked on Canes. Uh, we have some recruiting insight, including what really happened behind the scenes between the Washington Twins and Louisville and why there was some flirtation there. Right, how we were concerned. Those concerns have been alleviated, but we were concerned for a couple of days the Washington Twins might flip. What really happened there was really going on with Samson Okun Lola, the pancake honcho. When is he going to announce and will he announce Miami? Is Miami still in the lead? And some insight on Charlie Strong and the linebackers when we come back. But first, let's talk about LinkedIn jobs as you gear up for the fall. You're going to need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then you add your job in the purple hiring hashtag frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools then, like screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster every week. Nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn, so post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen every day. The Ultimate College Football Preview is here. A seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts like myself, and Odyssey College Football Insiders. It's everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. Search for Ultimate College Football Preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so... Um, Let's talk about recruiting. 
Really good piece on canesport.com from my friends Gary Furman and Matt Shodell, who do an awesome job. So here is uh, from Bobby Washington's mouth himself. So pretty reliable source on this. Go to the exact source on what happened with the Washington Twins. It was early last week. You started to have rumblings. You got Rob Robbie Washington, the four-star wide receiver, his twin brother Bobby, the three-star linebacker, have been verbally committed to Miami for months, okay? Then early last week, we started to hear rumblings that they might flip to Louisville, and they had scheduled an official visit to Louisville, which you're allowed to do. If you're a verbal commit somewhere, you are allowed to take officials other places. Some players do it. But there seemed to be a lot of smoke that Miami might lose Robbie and Bobby. Here's what Bobby had to say. Miami wasn't showing that much love at that point to me. They weren't calling me, but they were calling Robbie, he said. So the twins, who were set on attending the same college together, were concerned that UM wasn't all in on Bobby being part of the class. Quote, when we set up the Louisville visit, the Miami coaches, they contacted me, Bobby said. They were like, why would you take other visits? We need you at the crib. We need you to stay here, he said. So then Bobby and Robbie quickly canceled the Louisville trip. We knew we'd be staying at the crib, he said. I've been hearing from coaches at Miami every day since. I talked to all of them, really, Bobby says. They smoothed that over. He says, in particular, he's built a strong bond with Charlie Strong. A strong bond with Strong. You see what they did there? He's my position coach, and he's a cool guy. He knows what he's talking about. He's a great coach, Bobby said. I send him clips of me, and he just tells me, good job to drive through uh, the tackle. And uh, hold on, I, I lost my page here. I feel like Morgan Freeman. Ho Sorry, I lost a page. Oh, here he goes. Uh, things like that, he says. So everything is great, Bobby says. We know we'll be staying at the crib. We knew we'd be staying at the crib, he said. So obviously it goes to show you um, the importance. And Miami's coaches, I mean, these coaches, these new coaches, Cristobal and company, are usually really, really good at being in constant communication. Um, obviously you are being in constant communication with tons of people, guys that are already verbally committed targets that you're trying to get to verbally commit. So it just goes to show you if these coaches who are relentless sometimes fall behind on that stuff, it just goes to show you how much constant communication goes into the recruiting process. And I think that this outlines in the case of the Washington twins, how important the package deal is that Robbie and Bobby, right, they want to experience, you know, maybe kind of like the Pouncey twins at Florida over a decade ago, like Robbie and Bobby, they want to go through their college experience together. And it's very important for both of them to feel like priorities, right? And, you know, if Bobby isn't feeling like a priority, that's going to make Robbie concerned. And if, you know, if they felt like Miami is not going to prioritize both of us, maybe we'll find someone who will, uh, so, you know, and I, I like Bobby. I know that there's been some rumblings that, oh, maybe Miami isn't as high on Bobby as other schools are. And they really just did this to get Robbie. I, I think Bobby Washington can be an excellent linebacker at the University of Miami, especially under the tutelage of a guy like Charlie Strong. So hopefully this stays smoothed over for good and it's drama free right, right until both of these brothers sign their national letters of intent. But on Charlie Strong, um, I, I have been co-hosting this week on 560 WQAM and 790 The Ticket locally with Channing Crowder, who played for Charlie Strong at Florida. Uh, that was his uh, his linebacker coach uh, at the University of Florida. Uh, so, And I asked uh, Crowder about Strong's coaching style, and uh, I think got some really good insight on Coach Strong. Some of this you guys may know already. Some of this maybe you don't. So, you know, you think about Charlie Strong, he's been around for a long time, being more of an old school guy, but he's a little bit different than the typical old school coach. He never curses, right? That's just curse words are not in his vocabulary. He does not chew players out when they miss their assignments the way that a lot of old school, old school coaches do. Uh, Crowder told me that uh, Charlie Strong, he challenges you. Like he doesn't chew you out. He challenges you in a constructive way. Um, he recalled a time Crowder did when, you know, he made some error in a game. I don't know if it was a blown coverage or, or whatever. Uh, and then he goes to the sideline. Charlie Strong comes up to him and Crowder's maybe thinking, oh, man, this guy's going to give me the business. And Coach Strong asked him, aren't you an All-American? Crowder said, yeah, Coach. And then Strong replies, go out there and play like an All-American. 
And, you know, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, instead of, oh, screw you and F-bombs and all this, no, he, he is going to encourage you. He's going to give you something constructive. And, you know, also Crowder assured me, like, technically, Charlie Strong is a great teacher, and he, he can make you understand the fundamentals of the game and the fundamentals of the linebacker position in the simplest possible way. So I think it's kind of cool that Coach Strong does things a little bit differently. Uh, Coach Strong also was interviewed this week by Don Bailey Jr. as part of the University of Miami, their official YouTube channel. They do a camp report, and I thought he gave some cool insight on a couple of players uh, Charlie Strong has said that out of all the linebackers, Corey Flagg has had the best overall camp. I think it's really cool to hear that, right? I mean, Corey Flagg, you know, maybe maybe some limitations, but he was Miami's leading tackler last year. Uh, you know, I've I've spoken with Corey before, and I know he's working very, very hard heading into this season. And on Flagg, Strong specifically mentioned he appreciates how he's a student of the game and he's constantly, um, you know, asking questions in meetings, going out of his way. Like sometimes he'll go even go into meetings, I think, from other position groups and, and really want to learn this defense. And he's always wanting to soak things up and learning quickly. So I love that. I love that. And Strong also, he had nice things to say about true freshman Wesley Besaint saying, you know, he's going to be able to help us this year. Uh, but it's great. I mean, you got the injection of new talent like Besaint coming in, you know, next year. Miami's bringing in a ridiculous linebacker class with Bobby Washington, with Popo Aguirre, and with Malik Bryant. So the linebacking core is going to be absolutely loaded in the future. But for the time being, you know, the class of 2023 20, guys can't help you right now. For the time being, I love the idea of Coach Strong and Coach Steele helping Miami's current linebackers getting even better and even more prepared for games. Because I think that unit, a lot of room for improvement, yes. But I think that's going to be one of the most improved areas on the team is the linebacking court. And I just I love the fact that Coach Strong is here. So here's a quick recruiting note for the class of 2024. Uh, elite IMG Academy defensive tackle David Stone. This could be a top 10 player in the class next year, period. David Stone has now received an offer from Miami. Six foot four, 270 pounds heading into his junior year. So, you know, he's going to put on even more size, like before he actually, you know, commits somewhere. He's a composite five-star recruit. Uh, I think the composite rankings have him the 19th overall guy in the class next year. John Garcia told me yesterday when it's all said and done, uh, David Stone could end up being a top 10 player total in that class. And he seems very intrigued by Miami has not made a visit yet, but he mentioned, he said, hopefully, if Francis Maui Goa goes on another visit there sometime soon, I'll hop in the car with him, he said. Uh, I feel like they're going to be great, Stone told All Hurricanes at Sports Illustrated. Uh, that 2023 class they're building right now is special, and hopefully the 2024 class becomes special as well. Uh, you already have Antoine Action Jackson in that class, and hopefully a guy like David Stone can become part of that class as well. He's being recruited heavily, is Stone uh, also by... Texas A&M, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, and Michigan State, among others. And I'm sure others will get into that mix. But he is going to be a very, very sought-after guy. Uh, on Samson Okunlola, one of my listeners recommended I watch, uh, I think it's also an audio podcast, but I watched the video of 24-7, uh, a national recruiting podcast that they do, where Brian Doan, one of their analysts at 24-7, talked about Samson Okunlola's recruitment. So to sum it up, and credit to Brian Doan, obviously, I'm paraphrasing his words, um, had Okunlola, as we've talked about, had he announced during the summer, it would have more than likely been Miami that he would have announced uh, because, you know, Miami had, hopefully they still do, but Miami had built a really big edge in the month of July when they had all that momentum coming in. Now, the fact that he's taking his time, Okunlola, it definitely gives others, especially Alabama, Georgia, and Michigan State, who's been recruiting him heavily, a chance to firmly get in the mix. And also, Doan mentioned that um, Okunlola is intrigued by Oregon, right? You know, an East Coast guy, probably hasn't been out there before. He's intrigued by all the Oregon facilities and uniforms and all that stuff, like a lot of players are. Um, now, he said something that I think could bode well for Miami, that – Okunlola could likely make his decision based on which program and which coaches can put him in the best position to be a high NFL draft pick. 
Obviously, Alabama, of course, will be in that mix. But why not Miami, right? Because when you're talking about Mirabal and Cristobal, what they did with offensive linemen at Oregon, right? Because Cristobal can tell Samson, hey, look at Panay Sewell. I, you, you can be the next Panay Sewell. He'll probably tell him you can be better than Panay Sewell, right? I mean, so they, they have a recent example to sell this guy on. And, you know, offensive linemen do like the idea of a head coach being a former O-lineman and a former O-line coach. So I think that that could bode very well in the University of Miami's favor. Keep it locked right here, folks, because when we come back, we've got new selections for first team all Dono. That's coming up next here on Locked on Canes. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So let me remind you guys, first team all Dono. We're going to have 22 starters fully announced before the Hurricanes play their first game on September 3rd. These are players that are not necessarily the very best players on the team. Some of them are. They're not necessarily the best players on the team. First team all Dono, which is really first team all locked on Canes, are the players that I give the most love to on the show, and you guys give the most love to on the show. These are players that I have an unhealthy fascination with, and in some cases, players that you guys are always commenting about and asking us questions about on social media. So today we're going to give you the starting quarterback, the starting edge rushers, and the starting running back. The starting quarterback, uh, least suspenseful thing of all time, it's Tyler Van Dyke. <laughs> I mean, listen, I you know I thought about because uh, you guys know I'm I'm a big Jake Garcia fan as well. So like I could have said, hey, we talk about Jake Garcia a lot, but no, we we talk about we talk about TVD maybe more than any other individual player on this team. And I, I think he's he's going to be he's going to cement himself as a top five quarterback in college football this year and a first round draft pick in the NFL for next year. So not a whole lot of suspense there. Tyler Van Dyke, first team all Dono quarterback, your first team all Dono edge rushers. OK, got to give it to Nigel Lee Kelly for one of these spots. True freshman, Nigel Eek, the freak, absolute freak of nature. He's Gumby, so much bend, so much uh, quality weight for just a 17-year-old. It's not turned 18 yet, and he's wowing teammates and coaches in practice. The true freshman is going to get some run. He's going to get some sacks this year, Nigel Eek Kelly. And then at the other spot, uh, now he's going to be playing all over this D-line, uh, I believe, but Akeem Mesidor. Akeem Mesidor, transfer from West Virginia. Uh, I would probably say Akeem is the best overall player to transfer in. Now, I think Caleb Johnson, the linebacker, will probably be the most important player because of the position he plays and, and the need there. But I think Mesidor is the best overall player to transfer into the U this year. So he gets the other spot, first team Aldano edge. And then running back. I thought long and hard about this one. Uh, some people were predicting where we would go with first team Aldano running back. And a lot of the predictions were for Trevante citizen. It would have been Trevante, but I'm going to take a step back and say, since citizen is injured and I think he's going to miss significant time this year, that's not official. That's just our hunch right now. I don't think anything has officially been announced about his status, but I'm just going to say that Trevante Citizen, I'm not going to name a guy who could miss potentially the entire season due to injury. I'm not going to name him first team Aldano. He would have been dark horse, guys, dark horse. I'm going to go with Devin Perry, the senior walk on player. I'm going to go with Devin Perry, first team Aldano. And I think he's going to get some opportunities because Citizen is going to miss significant time. I think Don Chaney is going to miss some time. So Devin Perry could very well start the season as the fourth running back and get opportunities. Some of you think he'll be better than the fourth choice running back this year. Um, you know, he had a huge spring game back in April. From what I understand, he had a great scrimmage last week. I, I heard he scored a 50 yard touchdown in the scrimmage last year. And I love the Rudy story. I mean, Miami had uh, what was about three seasons ago, Jimmy Murphy, the walk on had an unbelievable story because he had a great year, scored some touchdowns. I think Devin Perry could be Miami's Rudy or the next Jimmy Murphy, and maybe even better than that, Devin Perry gets the nod, 
first team all Dono running back. So we're going to be revealing more. We still need to reveal defensive backs and linebackers. And I think we'll go with some special teamers as well. Um, I think we all know who the first team Aldano punter is going to be, but yeah, we will continue that feature throughout the week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Make sure you get more on the ACC by making locked on ACC your second listen host Candace Cooper and the local experts take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Make locked on ACC your second listen. Thank you for making us your first we will talk to you guys again tomorrow on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.